This call is being recorded. Welcome to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for opening up this technology, giving us this opportunity to just preach your word across this conference call line and then to record it and share it all over the world. We ask you now, the Heavenly Father, anoint afresh that your word might be spoken clearly, that those that are hearing your word might hear your word clearly, and that we all might be encouraged and strengthened in you. We love you, Lord, and we give you all of the praise, and we give you all of the glory and all of the honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our lesson today uh, comes from Luke. Luke chapter 7, no, 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 wrong verse, wrong, wrong word. I got my wrong page up. Sorry about that, y'all. Luke chapter 8, excuse me. Luke chapter 8, uh, verses 26 through 31. Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 36. My goodness, Lord, let praise your name. Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 36. Uh, we're going to start reading now out of the New King James Version of the Bible, and it reads, Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarene, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out of on the land, they met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. Now we're at Luke chapter 8, verse 28. Luke chapter 8, verse 28. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with? With you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come up out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bound the bounds and was driven by the demon demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him, and they begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now a herd of many swines was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them, and he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man, entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and took and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demon had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also who had seen it, told them by what means he had been demon-possessed was healed. Now, that's where the lesson stops, but I'm going to go on and read on just a couple of more verses of Luke 
chapter uh, 8, I'm at verse 37 now. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding regions of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear, and he got into the boat and, and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away. Return to your own house. Tell what great things God has done for you. And when he went his way, proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Amen, amen. I, I, I always, when I do this this text, I, 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 I can't stop. I just can't stop at the fact that the the the, the, the demon, uh, the spiritual, the demon, demonic possessed man was delivered. I, I have to go on and talk about what he did after his deliverance. That's why I read those uh, extra verses. Amen. Amen. Um, the title of today's lesson um, is um, one commentary calls it "Recovered Faith." Recovered faith. We'll come back to that in a minute. Another one deals with sound mind, uh, sound mind. And then another deals with it from the standpoint of spiritual deliverance. And, and I'm going to try to deal with it, probably all three of them because they, they're all three are very pertinent. Um, but to start off with the one called recovered faith, um, when we look at this text, uh, we, 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 can, we think about faith as having something having faith or believing or trusting in someone and then exercising that faith and seeing that faith come to pass. Well, this, this, this demonic possessed man uh, uh, who Jesus cast out the demons from, he, he couldn't have any faith. He, he was demon possessed. But yet and still, this text shows to all of us who are reading it now even, and even those who were there then, that Jesus has the power to show up out of nowhere and, and deliver us, recover us from whatever is against us or uh, uh, or tormenting us in this state of this man and, and blessing us that we might recover and behold. And so is the faith in Jesus by the person who gets healed or is the faith that, that we who are now reading this can know that Jesus will always be there for us, no matter what. And I believe that's, that's what, 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 where that title, uh, uh, Recovered Faith, would come from, is it's the fact that no matter what, Jesus is the answer. I don't care what's wrong in our lives. I don't care what's going on in our world. Jesus is the answer. And whether we're in our right mind to even call upon his name or our accent, somebody's praying for us. It may be your mama. It may be your daddy. It may, their faith in Jesus to step in and, and bless you no matter what's going on in your life, th their faith is the faith that's pulling you in. And so that says to us as Christians, those of us who, are, who love the Lord and and call upon his name. It says to us that we must believe what the word God says, that the prayers of the righteous, oh, hallelujah, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So it's our job to intercede for people. It's our job to, to, to go in as a prayer warrior over people and the situations that they're in and the circumstances that are coming up against them. It is our job to just constantly be in prayer. If you don't know or you're bored and you ain't got nothing to do, get out on your knees and call people's names that, that you know are going through stuff. Look at the news. You'll see all kind of tragedies going on around the world. Get down on your knees and pray for those people. And your faith in Jesus Christ will be heard by Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I know I'm already preaching, but I, 
But when I looked at these titles, I, I had to deal with them. That, that recovery faith, it just, it just, it just like wow. This this demon possessed man had no faith. He was possessed. He couldn't call on the name of the G, of Jesus himself. He couldn't exercise his faith. But those of us who are interceding, our faith is being exercised that others might recover. Oh, hallelujah. So don't stop praying. I'm saying something to something. Don't stop praying. Don't give. I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what their condition is. I don't care what the facts are. Don't stop praying. Don't don't give up on Jesus because Jesus can show up any moment out of the blue. Boom. That person will recover. Okay, now now let me get into my text here. <laughs> I mean, that, that, I had to get that out. That that was something that was just really on me, and I I know that that everyone listening this morning and those that are going to listen to this recording, that's going to help you to know what, what are you supposed to do. We're supposed to be praying for people that they might recover, and our faith, exercising our faith in Jesus Christ, will help them become recovered. Now, dealing with the other two titles that I talked about, the sound mind and the spiritual deliverance, um, they basically go hand in hand. Jesus is dealing with this person, it's going, as we're going to show, that that was out of his mind. He was demon-possessed. Um, demons had, had attacked him. Demons had possessed him. And, and, and demons are, are, are those little nymphs or imps that are working uh, under the control of Satan himself. And 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 we'll see some things about these demons and, and as we look through the lesson they uh, uh they 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 have territories. They have areas where they, they want to hang out and control and and and, and 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 Jesus had to deal with this particular set of demons. Matter of fact who wanted to just stay in control of this area, we'll see some of that er that later. And that, that helps us also to understand that 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 many times when we we go into different areas, when we even the areas in which we live in, that there are, are demons that have been assigned to that given area and, and they are running rampant. Oh mercy to God. But thanks be to God that 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 Jesus has the power and authority over them, and he gives us that same power and authority. And so we're going to talk about that uh, a little later. Um, the area in which they were in, uh, uh, Jesus said, the text says it was the gatherings, uh, or, uh, uh, and, and people have argued over the, the various names. Uh, gatherings is one, uh, Gergesins or uh, Ger uh Gadarai or Gergar uh Garasai, various areas they call this particular place. They, they it was all part of this uh area they called the the capitalist, which means cities of ten towns. And and it was on the other side of Galilee, opposite uh 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 Galilee, other side of the sea. And 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 this area Basically, was a Gentile area. Uh, Rome had 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 captured most of the the, the known world at that point, and um, uh, is Israel was on the edge. Israel was on the edge of of the far eastern edge of their uh, dominance, and then this area uh, 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 of the capitals was on the other side. So they, they weren't quite under Roman rule as Israel was, but it was more of a Gentile area, more Arabs, more uh, 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 Roman people were there, but they just weren't in, in, in total dominance. And so that becomes very important later on in the text. Now let me give some back, more background um, dealing with this lesson. Um, the The... Jesus, Jesus was was had picked his disciples, and and over in Luke chapter six, he had chosen his twelve disciples, and and um, he's taking them around, and and basically training them up 
uh, and the things that they needed to learn and how he wanted them to operate uh, as his disciples. And so um, we we saw on, on last week we talked about um, the um, – the woman who was uh, um, sitting at Jesus' feet crying after she busted the alabaster bottle, and and, and we talked about shameless faith, and and then since then Jesus has 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 went on to to to, to raise uh, someone from the dead. Um, he he had situations where where he was um, teaching um, uh, his disciples and showing them. Different parables: the parable of the soul, uh, sower of uh, seed, or the parable of the sword, the parable of the lamb, and and then he came to a point where they were in a boat trying to go to the other side of the sea, and a storm came, and this is where Jesus gets up and 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 and, and tells the storm to be still, peace be still, and and, and the disciples were astonished that that Jesus had the power to calm the sea. And and he talked about him like, you know, where is your faith? You know, what's what's your problem? Why 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 don't you understand this? Why are you getting all afraid? And then they said something back in, in verse um uh twenty five, they said the disciples said, Well, who is this that that can calm the sea? What 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 kind of man has the ability to calm the sea? They they wanted to know who this was, and so then the the text moves from there to where we are today in in Luke chapter eight verse twenty six. When they got to the other side, when they got to this area called the, the Gadarenes, they 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 said, "Whoa, okay, we we asked who is he." But now Jesus is getting ready to show who he really is. And that's where we're going to pick up our text. So the first first part of our outline is going to be the encounter. The second part is going to be the deliverance. And then the last part of our outline is going to be the proclamation. So let's look at the encounter, verses 26 through 31 of Luke chapter 8. Then they sailed to the uh, – to, to, the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite of Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who were, who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him with a loud voice and said, Ooh, hallelujah. What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for he had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bounds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him, and they begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now, as far as training up the disciples, this encounter, this encounter showed the disciples who Jesus really was. How did it show who Jesus was? Well, the demons that had possessed this man that Jesus has now encountered told them who Jesus was. They said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? Wow. Men Men sometimes do not recognize who Jesus is, but demons know who Jesus is. They know of his power. They know of his judgment. They know that that he has control over this entire world and that he has 
a time and a place that he has a sign for them. And these demons want to know, well, well what, what do we have to do? With, what way? Is our time up yet? This ain't the time. This ain't the appointed time. Oh, hallelujah. We need to hear this text. The demons are demons, but they're speaking a truth that, that we need to catch on to in this situation. They were afraid that Jesus was going to send them into the abyss. They were afraid that they were getting ready to get thrown into the lake of fire, but they said, wait a minute, this ain't our time. They know Jesus has the ability to punish them. What, what, what are you going to why you got? Well, you know, why are you doing this? Oh, that says something to me, that Jesus got all power in heaven and earth in his hands. When I hear the text that says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord, this 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 comes out and jumps out right here to me. Jesus had this encounter. Now Luke, Luke, Luke only talks about one man. Matthew, Matthew uh, and and Mark, when they deal with this text, Matthew deals with it in chapter eight, verses twenty eight through thirty four. Mark deals with it in chapter five, verses one through twenty. They they talk about there were two men, but here we only see one man in Luke's story, the way Luke tells the story. And here is the thing about this man. He was demon-possessed. He, 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 he was walking around with no clothes on, uh, living in isolation in the tombs. And, and not only that, uh, Another text, Mark, I think, um, is it Mark? The, the, yeah, okay, this text says that he was under guard and bound with chains, but he would break the chains. So this this cat was out of his plumb mind and had enormous strength. I mean, mercy God. <laughs> mercy God. He was out of his mind and had enormous strength. This demon possessed man was wrecking havoc in his area. Now, now, I, I may be getting off, but in my text, in, in my in my Bible, I have something written. And I, as I was looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, Matthew and Mark and Luke, each one of them has the same thing. This and, and and I said, "Wow, what did I write this for? What was you trying to say, the Lord?" And he says, "Well, just mention it, and I'll tell you the rest." <laughs> uh, this this man was in a in a position where he was isolated. And he was excluded. He was isolated, and he was excluded. This 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 demon possessed man was was the 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 poster child of an outcast. He was the poster child of someone being outcast. You 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 know we we encounter them often. They're homeless. They 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 they, they, they we think they just got mental problems. We think something is just wrong with them, but 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 maybe just maybe they are demon possessed. And we, as Christians, when we encounter these folks, we got to pray for them. We have to lift them up. And if God gives us the unction to go and lay hands on them and pray for them, and then command the demon or demons to come up out of them. We ought to do that because here I said earlier, the prayers of the righteous avail this much. Hallelujah. So these demons, these demons, get back into this. These demons recognized who Jesus was, and they begged Jesus not to torment them. They, they didn't feel that it was their time because they knew they had an appointed time. End of the Bible tells us that that, that they, they got a lake of fire, an abyss that they that has already been created and a sign for them to go to. So we down to verse thirty. Jesus asked him, saying, "What is your name?" And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him, called him Legion. A legion 
is in the Roman sense is about five thousand soldiers. And, and and this man had that many demons in him. Wow. Some would ask, well, why did Jesus ask his name? Jesus is all knowing. Why 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 did he ask his name? Well, he he he, he wanted to see. That's how many demons was in him. But he also wanted those who were around. Like I said, this is part of a teaching assignment for his disciples to know that this man had all of these demons in him. Mm, mm, mm. When we encounter people, we don't have to know their names. We we don't, we just know that they ain't Jesus Christ and 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 Him crucified and resurrected. If people are possessed. When we deal with them, we got to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit through the blood of Jesus to Christ. Now, what I've always found strange is verse 31. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. These demons start negotiating with Jesus. It's sort of like a child. When when your children, when your children, you tell them to do something and they don't want to do it and they start trying to negotiate with you to get out of that situation. That's that's how these demons were acting. Because they didn't want to go into the abyss. This was the encounter that Jesus had with these demons this demon-possessed man, and all of these demons, legion, mercy God, mercy God. Think about ourselves and, and how we fight our flesh and how we fight the world trying to come in and influence us and how we fight Satan trying to trying to trick us and, and, and convince our mind. But this man didn't just have his flesh coming against him. He didn't just have the world coming against him. He didn't just have uh, one devil coming. He had a legion of them. Oh, mercy God. Mercy God. And they were in complete control of this man. He was completely out of his mind. Oh, have mercy. He was completely out of his mind, at no control. So now we at the deliverance, verses thirty-two and thirty-three of Luke chapter eight, verses thirty-two and thirty-three. The deliverance. Now a herd of many swines were feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would not permit them to, that, that, that he would permit them to enter, and he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swines, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. Jesus listened to their negotiations, and there was a herd of pigs, herd of swine, Hogs hanging out at the mountain. This lets us know that this most likely is a Gentile area because we know that the Jews consider pig and hogs and swine and pork and all of that unclean because that's what God had told them. And so they begged him, can, can we go? The demons begged him, can we permit us, allow us, suffer us? to go into them. These demons were so so hell-bent on staying in that territory, so hell-bent on controlling that environment, that they would rather go into pigs than to go away from that environment. They'd rather try to possess pigs than, than to leave that area. 
and, and that's a strange thing about demons. They they want to keep control of a given area. Mm, mm, mm. And I always say, Lord, why don't you allow them to go into them swans? I believe Jesus knew that 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 the demons could not control those pigs. I, I I believe Jesus knew that them those 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 demons once they got into them pigs, them pigs was going to do just that. They were going to jump off and kill themselves. Have mercy, God. They ran. Now. The scripture does not tell us what happened to the demons after the pigs ran into the water. The demons, did they die? Did they go into the abyss? The text does not tell us. But the text does tell us earlier that it wasn't their time. So I don't know where the demons are. But I believe God is still in control. And there is an appointed time for them to truly die and go into the abyss. But at that point, the man, the man, who had this legion of demons in him was set free. He was no longer possessed by this legion of demons. He was set free. Jesus had delivered him. Hallelujah. God has the power to deliver us. God has the power to give us a sound mind. He can speak a word into our lives and give us a sound mind. Praise his holy name that he can deliver us into a sound mind. And that that is a wonderful, wonderful part of this deliverance. I hear John, not John, but Paul says over in Philippians, the second chapter, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We can have the mind of Christ. We can have the mind of Christ. And I believe at that point, this man was delivered and received the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. The last part of our lesson is the proclamation. We dealt with the encounter. We dealt with the deliverance. Now listen to the proclamation, verses 34 to 36. When those who fed, who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demon had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Oh, hallelujah. The people who were taking care of the pigs, who were watching over the hogs, they saw what was going on, and it made them scared, and they went and fled and told everybody. Why why were they scared? Why were they afraid? They had never encountered someone as powerful as Jesus. But they were also scared 
because they were responsible for them pigs, and now the pigs were gone. That was a financial thing. And oftentimes, people make a living off of things that aren't right. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know drug dealers. Y'all, y'all know people who 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 are trafficking and, and prostitution and all of that kind of stuff. And they get mad and upset when when they when when that which they've been making money off of, even though it's evil, has been delivered. A great example of that is even the woman who was walking around following Paul and Silas. Claiming that he was that they were men of God, and 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 Paul got tired of her saying that and delivered her, and then the people got mad and and jailed and beat Paul and Silas and put them in the jail. That's how it is. When we encounter people and we get them delivered by the power of Jesus Christ, it's gonna make some other folks angry, afraid. But it's okay. We're doing the work of God. And when the folks came back and they saw that Jesus had healed this man and that now he was sitting there, no longer demon-possessed, clothed in his right mind, acting normal. They had knew he was a terrorist from all around, but now he was acting normal. I text in there, but like I said, I went on, on the 37 and, and all the way over to, to, to verse 41 or 40. And it read that the whole multitude of the surrounding regions of the Gadareans asked him to depart from them, and, for they they were seized with great fear, and he got into the boat and, 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 and returned. Now the men from whom the demon had departed begged Jesus that he might Go with him, but Jesus sent him away and told him, return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. So it was when Jesus returned to that area that the multitude welcomed him and they were all waiting for him. All my brothers and my sisters, when Jesus has healed us, when Jesus has delivered us, we got to tell the world. We got to give our testimony. We got to be a witness. And if we continue to tell the people around us what Jesus has done for us, when he returns, they will be, he will be welcomed by them. That's our job. I don't know what you've been delivered from, but I've been delivered from a whole lot of stuff. I I, 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 I sometimes think about this man because I know it was times in my life where I was completely out of my mind, but thanks be to God, I now have the mind of Christ. And I can testify that he has picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. I could sing that song, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is like sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Jesus can give us a sound mind. Jesus can give us a spiritual deliverance. And when we recover, We ought to tell the world what he's done for us. Hallelujah. Before I end this lesson, I want us to just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to die for our sins. Thank you, Lord that we confess him as our Lord and Savior. He will forgive our sins and return us to our right minds. 
Help us, Lord, always to be grateful for your mercy and your grace that saved us from our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I leave now, i like to pray the prayer of salvation with those that are on the line with us and those that might be listening to this recording later. Please pray this prayer with me, a prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.